So I'm pretty sure this is going to be a pretty long video. This is my Q&A video that I do every weekend, or at least I try to. So if you have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments. Uh, sorry for the length of this video. If this video gets 300 likes, I will do another Q&A next weekend. So make sure you like this video. Anyway, let's get right on to it. Bear with me for my reading, I'm not the best. Beautifully flawed 20 asks, you seem very laid back and calm type of person. What snake, what snake or snakes gives you a slight anxiety and demands complete focus to handle? Also, what personal animals do you have at home? If any, uh, I think your channel's great, uh, more or less. <laughs> um, sum it up a little bit. Uh, I do have some animals at home. Uh, I have a little bit of everything. I have a couple water monitors. Um, I got some boas, I got a reticulated python, I just a little bit of everything. Just depends on the day of the week, to be downright honest. Um, if some snake needs to be quarantined, a lot of times I'll do that at home. But a uh, snake that gives me a little bit of anxiety, uh, big black mambas uh, can do that. They can turn around so quick, and they're really hard to keep in the end of a hook sometimes. Uh, big botherops do the same thing. Big bushmasters, you know, I'm still completely focused. So uh, those are animals that I really hold high up on the list. Thomas saw your spirit sprint. I totally killed that. I am sorry. Uh, I looked at the golden lance head and I would ask, why do some of them have horns and eyelashes? So if you Google an image of a snake, 90% of the time, the snake that you want to see doesn't pop up. Let's say you Google a northern water snake, you're probably going to see a lot of hog nose snakes. You're going to see a lot of diamondback water snakes. You're going to see some water moccasins. Don't use Google images to figure out what type of snake you're looking at. If you Google golden lancehead, you are going to pull up some golden eyelash vipers from South America as well. So, uh, like Costa Rica and all that. It's very hard. To, don't use Google images to actually look at, to see what a snake looks like. It's just very unreliable. Sam Watts, do you have a job alongside looking after the scaly babies? Uh, by the way, love your videos. Thank you. Uh, yes, I do. I'm a welder. Uh, eventually, I would like to give that up and do this full time because if I can, I'm going to travel a lot. Uh, I have an open invitation, or at least last check I had to go to Australia. Would love to do that. I got some friends of a in Africa. Love to go down to Florida over the Sonoran Desert. I just want to travel. I want to get out of the country. Go see some of these animals in the wild. But we're a little bit of ways away from that, so I'm not going to hold my breath. Tammy Gaytrick, great, great trick. I'm totally killing that one as well. How many animals do you have in such a personal collection? I would say 40. Um, now with that being said, I do have animals like crocodilians on loan, I have some snakes on loan, so I'm actually talking about animals I actually take care of. Now with that being said, if you count the animals I take care of, I take care of some friends, snakes, and you know, a lot of the snakes you've seen in some of my videos aren't mine. Um, those animals are, there's a lot. So <laughs> I've never really sat down and counted, so I'm not exactly sure. Um, what kind of snakes since of the picture of the thumbnail of this video? That was a uh, aurifer, Bothriacus aurifer, uh, which is like a Mexican palm pit viper, Mexican pit viper. Can't remember exactly, I'm not good with common names. I try not to use them very much because it can get very confusing very quick when a snake has 20 different common names. But uh, aurifer, it's, it's actually a pretty rare snake here in the States, but there are some out there. Uh, I think there's some breeding, I'm not sure, but uh, very cool animal very beautiful how about your personal projects i mean what are you planning are you planning to enlarge the venomous snake collection with new species uh that's from frank gomez p i do believe um yes i'm always thinking about expanding i'm always thinking about new species i would like to work with doesn't mean it always happens you know i really like to work with the uh the uh, Malaysian blue coral snakes but they're very hard to get into the country when you do get them in the country they're normally very sick so I would love to get an acclimated colony set up, but that would be a lot of work. That's just an ultimate goal of mine, you know. Having discovered the Komodo dragon and their venom has anticoagulant effects, have herpetologists found other species of monitors that are also venomous? This comes from John Case. Um, yes, I know like croc monitors, for instance, have anticoagulants in their saliva. If you ever see like a little tiny baby croc monitor, you're like, oh, he's so cute, and he bites you, blood everywhere. It's just adorable. But at the same time, the bite's not, it, it's pretty bad for a monitor, but it's not like life ending. You know, it's not a horrible bite. It's just when you get bit, you bleed. That's just what happens with that species. Uh, Nathaniel Frank actually commented back on him, you're 
freaking legend dude thank you for even checking out my channel i do appreciate that he works with venoms and milk and snakes and everything real cool dude pocket fella reptiles i think i'm saying that right i was wondering if somebody was wanting to get into working with venomous snakes are you taking apprentices i guess that's how you'd say that no not really um insurance is a real pain in the butt uh, in order for me to bring somebody in here, if they got bit, it would just be a nightmare. It just wouldn't be good. So with that being said, I am working on some videos of how to do certain things the safest possible way. So make sure you stay subscribed for that because I don't want you to miss out. But uh, actually working one-on-one -on -one with people very, very seldom. Uh, I have a cameraman that's going to be starting here relatively soon. Um, I will be working with him so you guys will get to see that. But that's neither here nor there, really. Natalie Turnbull, uh, which snake species uh, that you personally own do you consider to be the smartest? Could be the King Cobra, could be the Black Mamba. It's kind of hard to tell. Both of those are really smart. They're actually really closely related. So uh, it could be one and the same, but they're both very smart. Um, which snake, in your opinion, is the most underrated venomous or non-venomous? Uh, that's tough. Indigo snakes, uh, by people who've been keeping snakes forever, they're like, oh, indigo snakes. They are. To the new people, a lot of newbies don't even know what an indigo snake is. And that's a shame, because those snakes are amazing. They're smart. They're very visual. So they look across the room and they're like, that's another snake. I want that. I'm going to eat that. And they just... They're very alert. They they know. You reach into the enclosure, you find one in the wild, and you touch it. It's illegal to touch some of these, so don't just go out grabbing snakes because they are protected, like the eastern indigo is federally protected. But if you come across an indigo, a lot of times you can pick it up, and they understand. They're like, oh, he ain't hurting me. I wonder what we're doing. I guess we're going on a trip. And they just, they just hang out. Like, they're very calm. They're intelligent enough that if you don't hurt them, they're not going to hurt you. They're really cool. So they are an awesome snake. Uh, when you come to Australia, can, can you consider doing a meet and greet or seminar? Yes, I would love to do that. Don't know if I'd have anybody in attendance, but uh, yeah, that'd be really cool. Uh, what's your favorite lizard species and why? Hmm, I don't know. I really like monitor lizards because they're smart, but I also like beaded lizards and gila monsters because they're dumb. Bear with me, they're probably not as dumb as I'm making them out to be, but in my opinion, they are the pandas of the lizard world. If they weren't venomous, there would be no way they would still be on this earth. They are not good at anything. They, they fall. They can't climb for crap. You know, they're just klutzy. Um, they're not real smart. They're just, they're dorks, and I like them for that. They're just, they're neat. So, anyway, got through those questions. Those were all from Natalie Turnbull. Um, four English Lees? Lees? I'm, I'm not sure. Something like that. A uh, very cool video question, non-venomous snake. Uh, do you have any non-venomous snakes? I do believe is what you're asking. Yes, uh, I have boas, I have Burmese python, reticulated python. Um, I got some pine snakes. Yeah, I got some non-venomous snakes. Uh, I mainly keep venomous, but I do keep some others that I can just hold and play with. Uh, Sean Simmon, what is the smartest species of snake that you work with that keeps you on your toes the most? Yet again, king cobra, black mambas, stuff like that. Uh, keep me on my toes the most is actually probably be the bothrops. I don't think they're the smartest, but they are, they're crazy. Virginia B, question for your next video. Uh, are you married and have kids? Random stuff, sorry, not sorry. No, I'm not married, no, I do not have kids. Um, I strongly believe that the overpopulation of the earth is gonna be our biggest downfall. Uh, some people can disagree with that. I, I don't think I'm wrong on that. You know, uh, human population growth is exploding, and I think we really need to limit ourselves on the whole kids thing. So I probably won't ever have kids. I mean, it's not in the plans, at least. Um, am I married? No. Um, it's very hard to find a woman who actually likes reptiles. I mean, actually likes reptiles. When I'm like, hey, it's 2 in the morning. You want to get out of bed because we need to go catch a Gila monster that just figured out a new way out of his cage, or we need to go pick this up from the airport, or hey... Can you grab the camera? This is going to get interesting. Those are few and far between. That's a hard woman to come across. I don't necessarily want to slow down this part of my life to get to that point. You know, uh, I do like the companionship. I do like having someone around. I do like being able to talk, open up to people. But I'm just, I don't think I'm there yet. I'm not ready to settle down. Um, 
Second question, what all creatures do you possess that are native to North America? So there's the Gila monsters, um, a couple like uh, the pine snakes, um, a couple uh, milk snakes. Um, let's think about that one. Uh, that might be about it. I do have a cane toad, but that's not necessarily native to North America. It's not native for sure, but it is invasive. Um, down in Florida. I think that's about it. And that, I mean, I'm sure I can think of a couple more, but I can't think of a couple more right off the top of my head. Okay, Thunder Basilisk has asked questions before on this channel. Oh, so is Virginia B. But uh, anyway, speaking of eyelash vipers, which snake species should someone start with if they want to prepare for one? Um, I think it's more important that you understand how to use hooks. Eyelash vipers are like jack in a box. Whenever you open up that cage, they're out. They're like food. Don't get a baby. Babies are horrible. Like they just, they don't eat very well. They eat frogs and little lizards in the wild. So unless you have frogs and little lizards, they're not going to live very well. It's very hard to get those acclimated and established. But if you get one, you know, yay big and he's doing real well and eating, that's a good animal to start out with. The biggest thing is to understand to always use the hooks to open up the enclosure and to understand to keep him at the end of the hook. He's going to try to climb the hook. If you tilt the hook up like this, he's going to climb up it even faster because they love to go up. But if you keep it tilted down, he can slide down the hook. Having, having an understanding for that is huge. I don't know that there's a snake out there that's going to prepare you for that species. Keep a long enough hook to where you're out of strike range at all times. Use tongs when feeding. Use tongs when getting out the water dish. Spray them down because they don't drink from the water dish very often. Just understand these basic things. You should be able to keep an animal like that. Make sure it's legal inside your area. As you know, I have my legal issues. You don't need legal issues too. Uh, another thing, if they bite you, a small one like that, he's not going to kill you. Unless you have an allergic reaction, I highly recommend keeping an EpiPen on hand. Just as long as you don't have an allergic reaction, you should be okay. That's, uh, it's a toxic venom, but it's such a small dose of toxic venom. You should be okay. Yet again, not recommending it. It's probably a bad idea to get it, but there's really no species I can tell you to get. Maybe some little arboreal boa species or something. It's really hard, you know. Um, I figure if you can stay out of the range, strike span of most snakes, this one should be pretty easy. They're pretty, pretty chill. Just give them a lot of places to climb. Getting them to feed is the hardest part. My question to you is what happens if it gets a stuck eye cap? What happens if it gets an impacted pit? How do you fix that? I don't like pinning them myself. I will, but I don't like doing it. You know, I've done it in the past. I've done it for vets, for surgeries, and everything like six foot rattlesnake. That was sketchy. It's just, that's the great part about having a mentor. And even if it ain't a mentor, even if it's just backup, like your best friend also keeps a couple of venomous snakes, it's very nice to have the buddy system. You know, he calls you up when he's uncomfortable doing something and you call him up when you're uncomfortable doing something alone. Therefore, you got two heads, you can think it through, you're like, hmm, that might not be the best way. What about doing it like this? This might be better. Both of you can come up with better solutions. I love that. I love having friends around that can help me if I need help. But great question, by the way. Jason Carr? Another great video, uh, thank you. I've uh, seen the old video of your green anaconda, do you still have her? I, I, that's a pretty long story, I do not. Um, unfortunately, I had to get rid of her. I, uh, I got really sick and I thought I was gonna die and I couldn't take care of her. She was too big, she was too strong and I wasn't big enough, I wasn't strong enough. Um, I survived, as you see, I'm completely healthy now. But I had to slim down what I was keeping because even the cobras were very sketchy to work with, let alone an animal that was bigger than me. So uh, yeah, unfortunately I had to get rid of her. I'll go more in depth on that on another video. I'm working on that along. I've got a story time coming up on that one, but I'm just not quite ready for that one yet. Uh, when are you gonna see the female king again? Also from Jason Carr. I will work on that. Um, I'm getting ready to feed her, so I might do a feeding video. Um, she's doing great. Absolutely love how she's turning out. Um, she's a little fussy sometimes, but otherwise she's a spectacular animal. Patricia Hudges. I'm killing. I don't, I'm not going to try. Thank you. She says, I really appreciate the Q&A videos and you taking the time to make them. I, I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate you guys watching them. Sean, the pyrotech. That's cool. I like things that blow up. Anyway, Back to the thing, the question. You're from Missouri, what part? I'm originally from Hannibal, Missouri. 
Um, it's just a little town. Eh, technically, I'm originally I was born in Kirksville, Missouri, but then I love Kirksville. But then I moved to Hannibal, lived to Hannibal for a while. It's, it's a cool little place. Still like going back and visiting. But uh, do you have auto venom at home? I'm guessing Kevin VL. You mean anti venom? Um, I do not. I, I did this in one of my other other things. Uh, I have friends who do. That would probably be the people who drive me to the hospital. I have quite a few of the anti venoms so no, I, I don't technically have any in my house if you want the honest answer, but I have friends very local who do, so. Okay, I'm gonna kill this one. Uh, Itri Bbag99 asked a great question. Uh, enjoy the Q&As. Was wondering, people in the hobby tend to have Othro from more size. I never can say that word. I'm trying to read through it to help me. More or less, reptiles, uh, people associate moods with reptiles. Oh, that snake's angry. Oh, that snake's happy. Oh, that snake enjoys this. And needless to say, a lot of scientists strongly believe that animals don't have feelings. And I completely disagree. But uh, they say that we shouldn't push our feelings off on an animal who doesn't have them. And you were just asking if I think that if animals have them, more or less. Yeah, I, I do believe that reptiles do have feelings to a degree. A very, very small degree. Like, it's not, I, I don't think it's anything comparable to our feelings. But I definitely think reptiles can feel fear. Uh, you know, a mamba is the most feared snake on earth. They're also afraid of everything. And you can see that, you know, they run, they are afraid. So to say that they don't have feelings, how are they, you know, they, they fear for their life. I don't think it's necessarily a natural response. I think it is a thought out process. Um, as far as love, I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like, you know, some lizards are, I love to eat, so do I. So like, I can relate. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I could be 100% wrong, but I think there's a lot going on inside that head that we never knew. You know, uh, crocodilians is a great example, have a high-functioning cerebral cortex. So that's the part of the brain to remember, like, uh, patterns and stuff like that. So if you do the same thing every time, you know, for me, for the crocodilians I work with, don't do that, Ruman. Don't do that noise in my crocodile room, because now everybody's going to be coming at you for food, because that means food. A good friend of mine had all of his croc chow in a trash can. It was one of those metal trash cans to keep the mice out. Every time that lid would come off, even if we just put more croc chow in there, everybody would perk up. You know, they're smart. They understand this stuff. Even just a couple times, they'll learn that very quickly. But uh, anyway, that's my opinion. I think they do. Kathy T, what do you think about Steve Ludwin? Uh, so it's a dude that's in been injecting himself for snake venom for 30 years, according to you. I, I'm not exactly sure how long he's been doing it. Um, I don't know. No disrespect to him. I don't mean to disrespect you, Steve. Uh, I, I've watched your videos. I, I think it's very interesting. Um, I don't think it necessarily is embraced in the sciences. I don't think it's necessarily... I think it's you experimenting on yourself is exactly what it is. You know, is there any merit to that? I don't necessarily think so. You know, uh, how often are you in a lab taking blood work trying to figure out exactly what's going on? Um, so the thought is, if I start injecting myself with snake venom today, let's say I start with black mamba. Very little black mamba venom is used to kill a person. But let's say I, I tone it back. I mix it with saline solution, very, very, very little, and I start injecting myself with it. I can build up a tolerance to that venom. You know, I can go a little bit more, a little bit more, or I can just continually inject myself with the same microdose. And then whenever I get hit, if I ever get hit, hopefully I don't, if I ever get hit by a black mamba, in theory, I can take it a lot better than if I wasn't to get, you know, if I had never done this. Uh, clearly, that's the case. Look at Tim Freed. You know, Tim Freed's the guy who's been doing it. He's called the Venom Man on YouTube, if you want to look him up. Uh, he's not me. <laughs> Don't get us confused. Um, but there is a little bit of science behind it. I mean, it kind of works. But what I'm worried about is about his kidneys, his liver, uh, his nervous system. All that could be going to crap. And I mean real quick. And you wouldn't know. 
You know, I, one day you just go into kidney failure. And where are you going to get another kidney? You know, I, I know people that's on kidney dialysis right now that would love to have a kidney, and you're screwing yours up. I'm not poking fun at you, Tim. I'm not poking fun at you, Steve. I think you're great people. I do kind of, to a degree, respect what you're doing. I mean, it is science, needless to say. But I think there needs to be a lot more done in that avenue. I, I won't be injecting myself with snake venom, first and foremost. Um, it's very interesting. It still interests me a lot. But at the same time, it makes me a little nervous. I hope you guys the best. I wish you well. I don't really necessarily agree with it. Connell Sol Solanakai. Bro, snake charming's been illegal in Ill India since 1972. If you get caught, you'll go to jail for three to seven years. Didn't know this. That's interesting. Um, cool. I have seen like a lot of videos of like snake charmers and stuff. I wonder where that's done. I always figured it was India. Hmm? Guess I'm wrong. I don't even know where I brought that up, but apparently I did. Uh, can a rattlesnake grow bigger than a black mamba? What kind of venom does a black mamba have? You could find this on Google, but I'll answer your question. Uh, Michael uh, Clements, I do believe is how you pronounce it. No offense to you yet again. It's just hard answering all these questions sometimes. Uh, rattlesnakes can grow huge. We're talking like six foot. Black mambas can grow 14 foot in theory. So no, rattlesnakes do have a... They get so big and then they just stop growing, just like people, you know. It's like, can I get seven foot? Mm, probably not. You know, it isn't in my DNA. Uh, Black Mamba's getting 14 foot. There's always outliers, you know, possibly get a little bit bigger. Pro probably not, you know, maybe. But Rattlesnake's never going to get bigger than 14 foot. It's never going to happen. Black Mamba's never going to. It's always going to be bigger than the Rattlesnake forever. Um, mambas have uh, neurotoxic venom. This venom does not have any side effects. If you get bit, uh, you don't really feel it. You don't get swelling. Uh, it doesn't really deteriorate the skin. It just starts working on your ability to breathe. Uh, you start losing the ability for your diaphragm to move your lungs. Um, you're going to lose consciousness after about 15 minutes. You're going to stop breathing after about 45. It's one of the fastest acting venoms on earth. Um, you're going to become completely paralyzed, but you're going to still be completely awake. So when the doctor is sitting there two days and you're on life support, the machines are breathing for you, and they're wondering if your kidneys are going to shut down or not, and they're taking a little flashlight across your eyes and they're doing brain scans and like, wow, this guy's dead. He's brain dead. He's dead completely. Inside your head, you're like, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. You can't say nothing. You can't move. And that's what everybody says is the scariest thing in the world, the fact that they're not dead and that they're still awake, but the doctor thinks they're already dead. And, you know, probably some people have been taken off life support before not knowing that they were still alive. So that's the scary part. That's the terrifying part. Most feared snake in the world for a reason. Wicked Wildlife. Nick from Wicked Wildlife, my hero. Loving the Q&A, mate, despite being the free handling example. Sorry, sir. I do appreciate like the comments. Do appreciate all the content you put out. You're the man. I just had to use somebody as an example. I figured I could uh, probably apologize to you soon enough. So uh, sorry about that. If you check out that Q&A, you might understand a little bit better. He is the man, though. I do believe that's it. That actually went way quicker than I thought it was. Cool. So anyway, that was my Q&A. If you have a question, you can leave it down here into the comments. I do appreciate everybody that watches these. I know these are long videos, but I will try to answer all your questions. Any question you have, you can leave it down there. Sometimes the comments get a little crazy and it's hard for me to keep up. So if you have a real question, a pressing question that you need answered now, you can go to my Instagram, Venoman20, as always. You can go to my Facebook, Venoman20, as always. I will try my best to get on those platforms and answer you in so the quickest fashion that I can. But I do get a lot of messages, so bear with me. Uh, if it's really pressing, I do read everything as far as I can see. Now, I do miss some of the comments on YouTube, so I don't get notified for every single one. So keep that in mind. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. I do appreciate all you guys. Thanks for watching this video. As always, if this gets 300 likes, I will do another video next weekend. Y'all have a great night.